Hi there, my name's Vince from MyMateVince.com and in this video today we're going to be trying to fix up the green machine, the frog band. Yes, I know what you're all thinking. You're thinking, Vince, this is it. The best item ever on your channel and I do agree. So, bought it off eBay for, I'll just flash up on, uh, on screen what it was. I think it was about six pounds. Put a best offer in, it was accepted, plus uh, a couple of pound postage or a few pound postage. So this item here, I think goes on the back here like so. And it's supposed to be voice activated. So when you uh, put it near a, let's say a tape player, because that's this is from 1989, so that was probably most likely a tape player back then, a cassette player, they're supposed to dance. And it's uh, apparently not working. So let's see what's happening. Takes two C cell batteries. Turn it on. Okay, there's no lights on. And nothing's happening there, which is good news. So let's uh, take it apart and let's see if we can fault find this and see what's happening. Let's have a quick look at these battery contacts here. One of these, there we go. Oh, flying out at me. Right, so what we got here? Oh, battery contacts, hold on now. Right, that one looks okay. That one looks a bit rusty, but I think it looks I think I think it will be okay. It just looks a little bit more tarnished rather than uh, rather than rust. Right, let's uh, take apart. We have a screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here, screw here, and see what is happening. As ever, the trying to fix videos are sponsored by the My Mate Vince Massive, which consists of Saturnine Cinema, Operational 117. KitDigital.com, Kip Hakes, Max Rokotansky, Having Fun Repairs, and Ellensburg Amplifier Repair and Service. So thank you to them and all the Patreons. Now this is from 1989, so it has got a bit of age to it now. So we're looking at 31 or 32 years old. Right, that screw down there is rounded, so it looks like this might have been apart before. Let's try a, a little flathead in there. Yeah, that's got it. That screw's rounded as well. This isn't the sort of thing, though, I don't think anybody would have really tried to repair. Saying that, there is one for sale on eBay at the moment for, I think, £80. $79.99, which is just crazy. Here we go. <laughs> and there we have it. The most interesting video in the world. Why wasn't this a tea break repair? It's just the wires come off this here. Well, I think that will probably be my shortest video ever, but oh, oh, no, no, there's more, there's more. Ah, no, 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 broken teeth. Look here. Can you see here, these teeth are missing. So it's gonna skip, look there, it's not gonna do anything when it's there. Ah, oh, these are just all, these are just breaking down. Ah, there we go, gone. That has just gone completely, look at that. That's just broken down completely. Oh, now, now that is a little bit of a shame. It's weird because it's got like this coating. It's got this coating all over it. Look at that, it really is just crumbling apart in my hands. Hmm. Right, okay. Uh, what's that? Let me get a tissue. That's strange how it's got this like coating on it, isn't it? And this is that some sort of grease that's just hardened. Right, the odds of me having a gear to fit that is going to be highly, highly unlikely. But anyway, let's solder this on here, pop some batteries on, and let's see if the voice activated part of it is actually working or not. Right, let's see now. Okay, yeah, lights are on now, can you see? Here we go. 
So as you can hear, shout, shout. Yeah. How many people said let it all out? So I can hear the motor is spinning and you can see the, mo well, the motor spinning now as we're talking. Batteries just came out, hold on. Blah, blah, blah. Ooh, there we go. So uh, yeah, let's turn that off. So we have to try to find a gear that's gonna fit that. So let me get my box of gears and see if I'm, uh, I don't think there's any that big, but you never know. The green machine frog band might be back in operation again, ready to tour after COVID. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Okay, so here are all my gears. These are just sort of things you get from eBay from loads of different sellers. Now, I could be lucky. I could be lucky, but that middle bit's gonna be way too big, isn't it? But that outer bit looks about right, so I need something like that, but with a small hole in the middle, Ooh, 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 doesn't matter about this one here, does it? Because that, that's not gonna do anything anyway. Would that do the job? It might well do the job. That might do the job, you know, and also look at the teeth. Look at, I just can't believe how much that has broken down. Uh, the teeth might actually like, oh, look at that. Look at that, the teeth line up, unbelievable. Right, let's see if this is gonna fit. Oh, it's teasing me. Oh, look at that. It's so close, but it's not engaging on the gear. Oh, that's annoying. We are one millimeter too short. Now that is just a tease. Look at that. But I could change the gear there, couldn't I? Maybe I could change that gear to a bigger one. Let's see if I've got another one just bigger than this. Well, I'll try that one, but I think that's, that's gonna be too big, isn't it? Is there anything in between? the same as that, unlikely. And how many people are thinking right now if I had a 3D printer, that I'd be able to print one? The problem is I might be able to print one, but would I be able to design one? And I think the answer is no. And also, would you be able to print something that fine and that strong enough with the points at the very, very end there? No, right, so I'm gonna have to go with this one here, which I think are gonna be, I think they're gonna be too big. Let's give them a go. No, that's too big. That's just a, uh, it's going over the actual gear. Right, so I'm gonna have to either go with this and a smaller cog or that and a bigger one in the middle. So now maybe something like that would do the job. Let's take that cog off. So I found a gear that I think might be okay, but unfortunately the middle hole is too small and I don't have any drill bits small enough because they're tiny. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm just gonna use a very small tip on the soldering iron just to open up the hole a little bit. And I've got a lead off an old multimeter, which is the perfect size for the gear that came off the green machine. So if I can just widen up the hole a little bit and if it will fit on the needle off the multimeter lead, then I know it's gonna fit on the motor when it comes to the actual toy itself. There we go. I think that's gonna, I think that's gonna do it. That looks to be about the same as this one here. In fact, this is a little bit stiffer, which is good, because when it goes on there, it should uh, it should be okay, because obviously by putting the soldering iron in it, you're not making it perfectly round. Right, let's pop that on now, and see if it's gonna reach. Okay, that's gone on there nice. Now let's pop this one on. Ho, ho, ho. <laughs> it's gonna work, I think. Right, I'm gonna push them both back down a little bit. Just gonna use some synthetic grease.
So before we uh, before we do that, it looks a little bit dirty around here, so I just want to take off these lights and sensors. Quite a bit of corrosion on that bottom screw there. Okay, so there's a little circuit board there, and that's to do with... Oh, it's not dirt, it's just a foam around the microphone. Okay, and we got a little... What's that, a variable resistor there, or potentiometer there? It's like three legs on it, isn't it? Yeah, potentiometer there. Uh, Oh, here we go. Right, so there we go. Two uh, two lights, not LED, incandescent ones. And uh, yeah, there we have the board going up there. So I'll just focus in on the board just in case anybody's interested. There you can see all the uh, transistors labelled up on the board with collector, emitter and base. Right, so that doesn't really need any uh, any work doing to it. Do you know what? I forgot which way it goes. Yellow up top or pink up top? Let me have a look at the box. Pink up top. Okay, here goes. So turn it on, lights are flashing, and... Clap, clap. Uh-oh. Why have these given up the ghost? Oh, come on, Vince, I haven't just uh, broken something that was working. Uh. Does a wire come loose anywhere? Well, it must be to do with when I took it apart up the top here. I should have just left it, I just wanted to see what it was like on the inside. It wouldn't be the resistance on the, the motor because the gears are too tight, would it? Let's turn it off and take off one of the gears. That one's on really well though. Let's take off the actual motor gear maybe. There we go. Let's turn it on now and see if it's going to work. Yeah. Interesting. So it's the. Uh, they feel so loose, though. I wouldn't have thought that would have made a. I wouldn't have thought that would have made a difference. Well, I'm going to do it so it's just barely connecting. So it's just kind of uh, just hanging off the edge there. Testing, testing. Yeah, and the back two will work as well. <laughs> oh, look at them, they go up and down. 
yeah it's to do with the uh, the gears here they're they're just on a little bit too tight so I am going to what I'm going to do here I think I am going to lift it up use some sandpaper and get the mind you that's not going to make a difference is the teeth going on them I wonder if I get a bit of sandpaper and just rub down the teeth ever, ever so slightly, whether that would be enough. Yeah, I suppose on that one it would be, because then it's not going to be beating into the middle as here as much, is it? You know, the point of the tooth isn't going to have as much pressure on the middle bit. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to lift this bit up here, and then I'm going to keep making noise and just use sandpaper on this bit here to, uh, to rub it down. Yeah, just on this small cog at the back. Okay, I sanded that down a fair bit. It hasn't made any difference at all. I'm wondering whether the motor itself is a little bit weak. So let's, uh, I'm gonna put this top bit back together because that's gonna risk getting broken. I think I'm gonna take the motor apart because there might be, maybe the contacts have gone dirty, in which case then it's, the, it's not making a great connection. So these five frogs are starting to take up a serious amount of time. The minutes are quickly flowing into hours. I promised the kids that I would watch Stir Crazy with them, but that ain't gonna happen now that I'm deep into this. A quick video, I said. I just wanna get a quick video out of the way. Had a good hour to do this. I thought, I can fix this game in an hour. It's a worthless game. What could possibly be wrong with it? And yet again, it's one of those ones where you just wanna beat your head against a wall. So the, what I'm thinking now is I've sanded it down. I couldn't show you that bit, because obviously copyright on YouTube will just get flagged, even though that was probably the most therapeutic bit of the video, hearing the gears getting sanded down to the tones of Johnny Cash. Now, I'm thinking that the gears themselves might actually be all right. I'm wondering whether it's the motor itself, which is too weak. Now, maybe the motor's weak because it's dirty on the inside. So that's my thinking at this point in the video. So I'm taking the motor out to get to the inside to see if it needs a clean. Now, there is a fair bit there, isn't there? So maybe that's what's made it a little bit weak. Let's give that a clean. Or is that some kind of like electric grease which is uh, which conducts and it's supposed to be there? Do you know what? There's so much of it there, I would say that it's actually supposed to be there. But let's give it a clean and see if it enhances it at all. I'm going to put it back together now and see if we've got any more strength. Weird thing is, even there seems to be a lot of resistance just in that there. I'm going to put more grease in the pivots on the end of the axles here.
going to put some voltage straight into this motor. See what, uh, see how it spins. Yeah, it's not going to work. That that's only 1.5 volts, and it's not. Uh, let's lift this up here. Well, I think I'm going to have to go with a different combination of gears, you know. I don't think I'm going to win with these ones here. Ho, ho, ho. Same voltage. Same voltage. And it's spun. Ah, but not that way. There we go. But look, it doesn't want to start from a stand and it doesn't want to start itself. And now it's going. But it's not. Right, okay, well, that could be a possibility because I might be able to adjust that a bit. Let's see if I've got any other combinations that will work. Nope. So I'm going to have to just run with what I've got here now, which looks to be better than the last one. Well, I'm just going to try and sand it down a bit again. Right, it's definitely freer than it was, but it's still got rough spots in it. So I'm not sure whether or not it is going to work. But let's uh, let's pop it in and see what happens. Okay, here we go. Let's see if it's going to do anything now. Turn it on. Ah, oh, come on, frogs! Ugh. Still jammed, isn't it? Why is the motor so, so, so weak? I mean, look, I'm not using a huge amount of strength for my uh, hands here. Uh, I thought this would have been fixed <laughs> about an hour ago. Testing. It's not even there. Uh, it's not even wanting to go now when I'm clapping, really, is it? Ah. Oh. So what have I done? Made the motor even weaker. You know, I think I'm battling against different things here now because I took this apart earlier. What's happening is now, it appears to be working, but it doesn't seem to be doing much in time with the music. It just seems to be on. And then even when I turn the music off, it's still going on because I think the motor is making a loud enough noise to make this constantly think that that is music. Well, to be fair. But now you see it's just going off because the noise of the motor is just keeping it going. So I think it's quite critical about the foam around this microphone.
Right, I think we're getting there. So the variable resistor, when I put it round this way here, anti-clockwise, counter-clockwise, it basically goes off pretty much all the time. And then if I do it clockwise, it goes off only when you kind of whack it on the top here. So I think I've got a good sort of happy medium where when I click my fingers and uh, like shout, it goes off. But yet when I have my phone running, it doesn't seem that sensitive, but my phone's not really going that loud. So I think maybe it only works if you have louder music on it. So uh, check this out now. Right, so that was the noise of putting it down, but watch. And even from here. And if I shout, then it goes off. But when I speak normally, it doesn't go off. Well, I'm glad now. I'm glad now I know about the potentiometer. And if there's anybody else in the world wanting to fix one of these, maybe that will actually be useful for them. So I'm just going to put the phone back in around it because now when I've got it fully in, if it's still too sensitive, I can just mess around with the potentiometer again. Or the variable resistor. Ah! That just popped off the back. Look, this popped off the back, so that's exactly what they do. They put it together, and that leads to the potentiometer. Or the variable resistor. Fantastic, excellent. Well, that's what, uh, that's what it's there for. Right, the weird thing is, no matter how much turning I'm doing, it doesn't seem to be very responsive. No, something's definitely not right with this. It's, when I put it back together, it's not working. There must be a bad wire on the inside. Now, just because this toy was out to get me, this bit threw me for about 30 minutes. And I'm not gonna show you it in live time because this video would be way over an hour long. And it's, it's, it's gonna be painful to edit. It, believe me, it would be even more painful to watch. Basically, the bottom line is, every time I had the microphone out of the casing, it was working fine. Every time I put it back in the casing, it stopped working. And I was just thinking, is it to do with alignment? Is it to do with the fact that it's echoey when it's in there or it's not echoing? Or, you know, does it need to be contained in order it's for it to work? And I was just going back and forth, turning the variable resistor to the right, turning it to the left, putting it back in, taking it out. And every single time I took it out, it worked. And every time I put it back in, it stopped working until I worked out what the actual problem was. Why, when I put that in there, does it stop working? Why does it stop working now? Is it a broken wire on here somewhere? Ah, oh, yes, the wires are twisted together. Look here. See the wires are shortened together here. Let's separate them out. That's what it is. So when I put it in first one, I must have twisted it and uh, the wires are shortened and every time I take it out, they separate. Right, I'm going to cut these back and solder them on again. Oh, I feel so good now that I know that was driving me nuts, that I know what's the problem. Let's separate them out so it's less likely to happen in the future. Oh, that was doing my head in, it really was. I thought that maybe it was something to do with the vibrations when it's in there, that it's vibrating through more because the, the sound's not escaping out of the uh, open back. But no, it was just that the wires were shorting on the microphone. Right, hopefully now I'll be able to put it back together and put, uh, just leave this out, get it working perfectly 
with my phone so the, the right volume on it and then uh, all I have to worry about now is the motor. Or I should say the gears on the motor. Okay, so they're not twisted now, and it's not shortened against the edge of the uh, thing. Well, that one is, because that must be like the one that needs to short against the edge. Right, okay, let's now pop it back in with the foam around it, and hopefully we can now adjust it to make it work just right. Right, let's turn it on. Excellent. Right, I'm just going to play some music and adjust it. I'm going to stop filming for a while because all I'm going to be doing is adjusting, sanding, adjusting, sanding, and then uh, I'm hoping I can get it where it's working. Oh, ow. everything I've done, this one is up there with the Truckatronic, and that is saying something. Do you know what? I, I don't know if I can face any more white gears in my life. These things here are just uh, just such a pain. So basically, I've got it going, but not brilliantly. It is, uh, let me just turn it off, otherwise it's gonna keep on going. Right, it's, uh, I kept sanding down the gears, trying to make them into a bit more of a point so there's less kind of contact area. Basically, it works all the time if I can kickstart the gears. The problem is the motor often doesn't have enough oomph to kickstart those gears, and that's the problem. So sometimes I have to kind of whack it to get it going. Also, it doesn't really seem as sensitive as it did earlier. Earlier, to me, it seemed to actually be playing with the beat of the music. Now, I just need to make a load of noise for it to work. So I'm not sure how well the microphone's working, but I'm not gonna go out and buy another microphone for this. I'm not gonna look for more gears because the thing is they have to they, they have to be like millimeter perfect in order them, for them to work. As far as I can see, I can't see why these gears are not working, but they're they're not because they're not moving as freely as they should and it's not just the ones that I've changed the gears in the gearbox as well if I take out one of them then they move so it kind of works fine with two or three gears but then when the fourth and fifth gear goes on that's where all the uh, resistance is coming because remember this is doing quite a lot of moving and stuff around the place anyway I've got some royalty free music at the end of one of my videos that I'm going to play in here and you can see that when I play it and pause it, it does stop. Then when I play it again, hopefully it will start. So, uh, right, so I've got the lights flashing here. I might have to knock it. Oh no, it's going. Right, here we go. So you can see, it's, to be fair, it's, work, it's working. Uh, it's working okay at the moment. The ones I like the best. It's like a vicious circle because you have to shout over the noise and then it picks it up even more. The ones I like the best are these two on the keyboard at the bottom. So inside, it's all it's all very simple, really, how it all works. So if you have a look, the ones that make the keyboard uh, player and the, the the bongo player or the drum player here go up and down is just because you can see it's on like this cam here. And when this one's on, this one's off. And these are just on a little spring here. So when the frogs move up and down, it just moves this up and down here. Yeah, so that's just on like... Uh, like a half circle cam. Uh, this is just to change the angle of the gear from this way to this way here. And this one here, again, it's just a cam on this one here. And as it's moving, it's moving it around like that. Yeah, so you see the guitar player there and also this, uh, what's this, a saxophone or something playing there. And the very front one is just wiggling here as this is, as this is going round. Yeah, as that one's going round, that one's turning and moving. This is moving left to right like that. Yeah, because of uh, 
because of this bit here. Yes. So when that's moving, the, he, he's moving this bit, bottom bit here, and the microphone's moving left and right. So I mean, it's definitely a novelty item. So let's get it back together, give it a little clean on top, and then we'll do the final reveal of it. Right, let's turn it on. So we've got our little lights on there. Oh, they're behaving themselves. Now that they know they've made me angry, now that they know they're not going on tour, that they've, uh, they're gonna behave themselves. One second, let me just get this thing off my video. So ladies and gentlemen, here we have for the very first time on YouTube, the Green Machine Frog Band. Give it up.